I've never seen anything like it. Talk about your heroism. He went down in that blazing pit, not once, mind you, but three times, and carried them all out, one after another. Not really. Why, he doesn't know what fear is. Probably too dumb to know what it is. Well, where there's no sense, there's no feeling. There's nothing dumb about him. I wish I had more men like him. I hope you rewarded him, Arthur. Say, you wouldn't believe this. I presented him with a check for $1,000, and he wouldn't take it. What? Must be interesting to meet a man like that. <laughs> You're going to. I've asked him over. Here? Yes, tonight. For heaven's sake. But we're going to the opera right after dinner. That's all right. He's only coming for dinner. A workman? For dinner? Yes. Why not? Arthur, what ghastly joke is this? But Henrietta, he's a hero. In overall. Well, what will our guest say? Uh, call him up at once and tell him he's not to come over. He isn't a common workman. He's a steel boss. See, Mother? Perfectly all right. He's a steel boss. His name is Dick Brunton. I don't care what his name is. Brunton? Brunton? That name sounds familiar. He's a fine chap. I've had my eye on him for a long while. Don't talk to me. <laughs> Overalls. Oh. Well, it'll be a thrill having a working man for dinner. Yeah? Well, you've had one for a good many years. Me. Well, that's all I was when I started. But this invitation, it's downright cruelty. Dinner with all our flunkies around might prove very embarrassing to Slim Jim the Railbender. Gosh, I never thought of that. Oh, it'll be lots of fun watching him scoop mashed potatoes on his knife. Oh, it won't be as bad as that. I know those strong, silent men. Well, I'll put the radio on while he's inhaling his soup. Longview, 5855. Now what are you going to do? Break the big news to Charlie Bates. Well, I guess I'll go up and change for dinner. Yes, by all means. And Finley's laid out a nice new pair of overalls for yep. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Charlie. Listen, you're going to have the laugh of your life tonight. Father's invited a big he-man from the mill for dinner. All right, Dot. I'll come over and bring my dinner pail. Now, don't fail to get over here on time, will you, Charlie? You bet, Dot. As soon as the whistle blows, I'll throw down my tools and rush right over. All right, Charlie. Goodbye. What's the opera tonight? Well, I think they're singing Il Trovatore. Il Trovatore? Good. I'm glad I ducked it. I hear enough anvil choruses out at the foundry. Doc, I know you'll enjoy the opera tonight. Why, she's not going. Pass the olives. Dorothy, would you mind passing the olives? Do the doctors think they can cure it? Cure what? Your hearing. I've asked you 18 times to pass the olives. Pardon me. I said the olives. Excuse me. Say, Doc. Get a load of that. Dick Marrow looking for a toothpick. What an odd charm. May I see it, please? Oh, it's nothing, really. Oh, please. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> a grievous social error has been made here tonight. Dorothy? A guest has been brought here under false pretenses. Dot. Let me introduce to you the real Dick Brunton, all-American houseback, the man who beat Yale. Why, <laughs> Brunton, say, I had no idea. Halfback? I thought you said he was a steel boss. Boy, I'll never forget that forward pass as long as I live. Well, I'll be a something or other. You certainly will. Well, I'm glad that's out. You've had me guessing all night. Oh, Serve well. coffee in the drawing room. <laughs> you know, hey, Brunton, know. this is a surprise. One or two lumps, Mrs. Parker. One, please. Well, Brunton, have you changed your mind about that check? No, sir. Thanks just the same. Have you talked it over with your mother? Yes, sir, and she agrees with me. You see, Mr. Parker, I didn't do that for money. I did it because, well, anybody do it. You understand, don't you? Yes, I think I do. 
A thousand dollars is a lot of money, Mr. Button. Yes, but... Oh, don't be silly. Go ahead and take it. Why? Do you want me to? Would you? If I wanted you to? No. Uh-uh. Fourth down, nine yards to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the very least, I'll see that you get the Carnegie Medal. Oh, no, please don't do anything like that. <laughs> How does it feel to be a hero? <laughs> You'll never know. Dorothea! Now, please leave Mr. Button alone. I want to talk to him. <laughs> Why didn't you tell us you were Dick Brunton, the all-American halfback? Why should I? Right now, I'm simply your father's steel boss. I can't understand why you kept it dark. The All-American, I mean. Make things easier for you. I know. But easy things aren't much good. But aside from that, it would get you in with the right crowd. You can't run around with the right crowd on 45 a week. Mr. and Mrs. Post. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello. 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 Say good evening, everybody, Pansy, darling. Are you ready to go, Henrietta? Yes, dear. Good evening, Llewellyn. How do you do? Uh, will you walk upstairs while we get our wraps? Yes, surely. <laughs> Say, Llewellyn, will you have... Uh, oh, what? I... You'd better go and sit in the car. Yes, dear. And bundle Pansy up good, because I don't want my little bitsy baby to catch cold. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. What a spectacle. Well, he's no more than a kept husband. It's a tragedy. Llewellyn Post should have been the greatest architect in America. But he married Lucille. She wouldn't let him work. She killed all his ambition. It's her fault, not his. Oh, you don't have to go yet. Dad and I aren't going out. I know, but it's late for me. I have to get home and go to bed. You see, I have to be at the plant at six. Six, eh? I never go to bed until six. I'll have Hopkins take you home in the car. Oh, my yeah, dear. I haven't seen the first act in years. Well, all set? Yep. Good night, Mr. Brunton. That's good night, Mrs. Well. Parker. I've had a wonderful time. Well, well let's get to it. Have a good time. We will. Yes. Yeah. You've been mighty kind, Miss Parker. I'll remember this evening for a long time. So will I. I hope you'll forgive me for exposing your uh, past. <laughs> That's all right. I wish you'd think it over. You know, about getting in with the right crowd. Honestly, I can't afford to. Well, that wouldn't make any difference. And anyhow, I spend my spare time studying. See, I want to get somewhere. It's more to life than just gold footballs. Really? And there's more to life than grinding away at books every night. Oh, I don't like to. I'm human. You don't mean it. <laughs> I wouldn't have suspected that. I enjoy a good time as much as anyone. But I'm working now so I can have fun when I get older. And can't enjoy it. Well, maybe you're right. Well, Brunton, if you're ready, we'll... <laughs> yes, sir. Good night, Miss Parker. And Good thank night. You. Thank you, too. You've been very kind. Not at all. Well, good night, Mr. Parker. Good night, my boy. Well? Well? Did you notice how he balanced those peas on his knife? Oh, don't rub it in. How about your thousand dollar check? Ah, that boy has something. He's one man in a thousand. Thousand? He's one in a million. And as far as your daughter's concerned, he's the one man in the world. What do you mean? I mean, I'm going to marry him. What? Are you crazy? You just bet I am. Look here, Dot, you're not serious. Dad, I was never more serious in my life. The minute I saw him, I didn't give two hoops if he gargled his soup in the key of A minor. All I knew was that boy was made for me, and what's more, I'm going to have him. Now, look here, Dot. Aren't you just a little bit hasty? I can't get him too quick to suit me. See here, Dot. Now, listen. Don't you fool yourself. Now, I'm a pretty good judge of men. I tell you, this boy has real character, and he'll never propose to you. Now, see here, Dad, listen. There isn't a man in this world a woman can't win, if she really wants to land him. I don't believe that. All right. All I ask is four weeks. Four weeks? Four weeks. When do you think your wayward son will stagger in? Can't tell you. Well, it's getting late. Oh, rich folks like the Parkers have supper till all hours. Yeah. What's caviar to the few is applesauce to the gander. You should have told him to take that thousand bucks. Oh, no, Huey. Why should I? Why, I wouldn't want Dick to take anything he didn't earn. A penny saves a dollar earned. You 
If you had all that sugar, maybe you could ease up on my board bill. <laughs> I'm in no hurry for the money, Huey. Well, that's just as well, because I ain't got any. Say, would you mind honking the horn a couple of times? Sure. Well, Mother, I told you we'd be riding around the Rolls Royce one day. Did you have a nice time, did you? I certainly did. <laughs> Hey, high pockets, did you bring home the bacon? No, I told him he could keep his check. I figured that all in. Did you give Mrs. Parker my love? Sure. What'd she say? I'll take vanilla. <laughs> well, now that that's all settled, maybe you better hit the hay. I claim early to rise and early to bed and you live all your life. Until you're dead. Now tell me, Dick, what kind of people are they? Oh, you'd get a great kick out of them, Mother. The father's a pretty good scout. Don't do that, Mother. They're gonna ruin your teeth. Oh, they were ruined long ago. How about Mrs. Parker? <laughs> She's got one of those trick English accents. The only trouble is it slips out of gear all the time and she gets all balled up between her bauses and her vases. Oh, well, that's no crime. Is she nice? She almost froze me when I first came in. Looked at me as though she expected I'd be wearing overalls. Oh, you only imagined that. How about the daughter? Not for mine, just plain spoil. Oh, well now, maybe that isn't her fault. Too much money isn't good for anybody. Still, some of them make very good wives. Well, I can never imagine her as a wife. <laughs> imagine Dot Parker bending over a wash tub. Well, maybe she wouldn't be afraid to bend over one if she had to. Oh, don't be silly. Say, she's about as useful as, as a little silky kitten. That's what they should have called her, kitten. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Barber. Hello, Dick. Look over these. What are they? The Mississippi Bridge Plans. Something that will revolutionize the industry. That is, uh, if he can sell the idea. You don't seem very confident. I know it's the greatest engineering achievement in years. Parker's willing to bet his role on it. But it'll take a real salesman to make others see it as we do. Well, let's get started. All right. Can uh, you get them finished by one o'clock? Yes, sir. Fine. We're awfully busy. I know I can depend on you. been working here. Well, there she is again. Couldn't be more regular if she punched the clock. Ain't that old man Parker's daughter? Sure. What's she here for? Well, if you don't know, you're the only one that don't. She's here to grab Dick Brunton. Yeah? Yeah. Pretty soft for Brunton. That girl's independently rich. She's got nothing on him. He's independently poor. Gee, I wish some doll would all hurt though. It was nuts about me. Sorry, busy. Dick, too busy for me? Oh, Doc, how are you? 
Fine. How are you? Well, I'm kind of tied up. Mr. Barber gave me a rush job. Oh, that can wait. No, it's very important. But I've got something even more important. Honestly, Dot, I can't. It's your lunch hour, isn't it? But I promised Mr. Barber. Oh, he can spare you for an hour. No. Hello, Mr. Barber. Hello, Miss Parker. Do you mind if I take Nick away for an hour? Why, no, uh, not at all. Those plans can wait, can't they? Yes, certainly. But, Mr. Barber... That's you... all right, my boy. That's all right. Thank you, Mr. Barber. Not a member. Mm. There's yours, Paul. Thank you. They always work. Gee, that's a keen trick. You gotta show me how to do that. Dick. Know what day it is today? Yeah, Wednesday, December 20th. It was exactly four weeks ago today I met you. That's right, four weeks. What are you smiling at? Just thought of something. Just think, four weeks. And it seems as if I'd known you ages. That's just the way it seems to me, too. But I have known you a long time. I've seen many games you've played. Why, when you beat Yale, I even cut your picture out of the paper and put it over my dresser. Oh, you're kidding. Am I? There. Whoa. Gee, that was, that was published about five years ago. I guess you'll believe me now. December 20th. Five more days till Christmas. I better get busy. I suppose you did your Christmas shopping early. I've only got one more thing to get. Been expecting to get it for four weeks. You better not put it off any longer. That depends on you. On me? Mm-hmm. Well, if there's anything I can do. What is it? A proposal. A what? May I have it? You mean, you want me? I want you. You're only kidding. All right. Just propose to me and see whether I am or not. Dot, I can't do anything like that. You mean... I'm nothing but a... You mean you won't propose to me? I would if I could, but... Very well. I'll propose to you, Dick. Will you marry me? No, Dot, I can't. I haven't anything to offer a girl like you. You're all I want. I know what you're thinking, but don't let that stand in your way. Don't you love me enough to forget it? Oh, I wish I could forget. Oh, if you really love me, you'll try. Won't you please try? Come on, Dick, say yes. No. Yes. Oh. Oh, gee, I'm so happy. Put that on. No, I can't do that. Oh, but look, someday you'll afford to buy me one. Go on, Dickie. Please. Miss Bragg, you're impossible. Send her the Christmas card. 
And her husband is a victim of the stock market. Spare me your sarcasm, Arthur. That completes the list, doesn't it? Yes, ma'am. Mother, you've forgotten all about Aunt Julia. Thanks for reminding me, Dorothy. Now, let's see. What is useful in a boarding house? A long reach. Money is useful in a boarding house, Mother. If I send Julia money, she'll only spend it. Send Aunt Julia a nice warm shawl, Miss Bragg. That will be all? Yes, Bragg. Christmas gets more appalling every year. Craig's so stupid. I'm sure she's omitted someone. She has. Oh. Now, what do you want for Christmas? Oh, I've selected my Christmas present. Oh, you have, have you? Well, what is it? Not what, who? Stop your foolishness, Dorothy. What do you want for Christmas? A husband. <laughs> I'm afraid I have no sense of humor. Wait a minute. So it's happened, has it? Mm-hmm. Give a woman four weeks. What are you talking about? Mother, I'm going to marry Dick Brunton. Dick Brunton? <laughs> the working man? Yes, but he's a steel boss. Oh! Uh, Arthur, are you going to do nothing and your daughter's gone crazy? <laughs> Oh, it's all your fault. Inviting him here to dinner, I... Oh! Dot, I can hardly believe it. I never thought he'd propose to you. He didn't. I proposed to him. Well, I'll be... Oh, Dad, it's all right with you, isn't it? Can't I have him? But just think, Dot, he couldn't keep you in shoes. You're accustomed to all this. You'll never be able to give it up. Well, I don't intend to. You'll have to. He only earns $45 a week. But you're going to raise his salary. What? Dad, I want him more than anything in the world. Won't you please let me have him? Now, you know that I'd do anything to make you happy. Gee, you're a peach, Dad. He's a good man. And you'll promote him, won't you? I'll have to if you're going to marry him. And don't forget, I can't get along on a cent less than 50000 a year. Fifty thousand? Mm -hmm. Why, I couldn't possibly pay him that. It would disrupt my whole organization. Oh, Dad. Now, don't worry. I'll give him a little raise in salary. And I'll make up the difference out of my own pocket. Oh, thanks, Dad. But look here, Dot. Now, you be careful. A man has to be made of strong stuff not to let money spoil him. Don't let it spoil Dick. Money spoil Dick? Oh, don't be silly. Could never spoil Dick. Well, I'll have to be going. And now, where are you going? I promised Dick I'd go right over and tell him what you said. Bye. I'm in an <laughs> awful hurry. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's you, Huey? I guess so. Didn't Dick come home with you? Uh, two's company, three's a crowd. What are you talking about? Won't be long now. Coming events cast their shadows behind. Oh, go on up and get ready for dinner. I guess if you knew what I know, you'd believe in Santa Claus. Mother, I've got a surprise for you. A surprise? What is it? I'm going to be married. Dick. Oh, that's wonderful. Who is she? You just wait. She'll be here in a minute and you'll see her. I, I just knew something like this was going to happen. Oh, I know you're going to love her, Mother. Oh, I'll fix up the spare bedroom. Spare bedroom? Yes, you can have it until you move into a home of your own. Oh, Dick, this is lovely. Imagine getting a daughter for a Christmas present. I wonder who that is. Must be Santa Claus. A Christmas present for you, Mother. Mother, this is Dorothy. Dorothy Parker.
You. Dear, dear child. Isn't she sweet? She certainly <laughs> is. <laughs> well, I don't know what I've done to deserve the two best women in the world. Who told him he deserves us? <laughs> oh, let me go. You hug like a bear. <laughs> Will you excuse me a moment, please? Oh, Dick, I'm terribly happy. Everything's all right. And you don't know how glad I am, Kitten. Kitten? Yeah, that's my pet name for you. Well, isn't that funny? You know, Dad used to call me that when I was a kid. <laughs> Let's sit down. Want to take your coat off? Oh, no, Dick, I think we'd better be going. All right. Dear, I want you to have this. I wore it when I was young, and my mother before me. It's supposed to bring good fortune to the bride. Why, what a lovely old ring. I wear it all the time. Mrs. Burton, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. I hope it brings you all the happiness in the world. I don't want to rush, Mother, but we've got a million things to do. No, that's all right. I understand. Dick's a wonderful boy. But all men are peculiar. You just handle him right, and you'll be very happy. Oh, I understand. I'll be home early, Mother. Good night, Mrs. Bratton. Good night. I don't give it much. It's last year's model. Sap if he marries a dame like her. You'd never catch me doing that. Doggone if I'd slave for a million bucks a week just to have some canary spend it on brassy ears. She's a nice girl. What's one man's meat is another guy's poison. I've heard of marriages made in heaven, but not in the Parker steel plant. Well, they're so devoted. I think it'll work out all right. Don't kid yourself. I claim oil and water don't mix. East is west and west is east when Greek meets Greek. When you came down that aisle, it just took my breath away. <laughs> Will you forgive me for kidnapping your son? Of course. I know he's in good hands. Dick, you have the most wonderful girl in the world. See that you take good care of her. I will, Mother. And don't you go shutting yourself in your room every night like you did with me. You know, Dick was always terribly ambitious. Yes, I know. Oh, I won't let him work too hard. Oh, well, I guess I'd better run along. You're in a hurry to get down to the boat, and I'll say good goodbye.
Well, I'm going out to the car. Will you come along with me? <laughs> come on, Mother dear. Goodbye, Dick. God bless you both. Goodbye, Mother. Say, Dick. <clears throat> well, <laughs> you have it? Yes, sir. Well, I hope you're a good sailor, because my yacht isn't quite as large as the Leviathan. Now, have a good time. Lots of work for you when you come back. Oh, I'll be ready. <laughs> One thing more, Dick. You know, girls are peculiar, and you have to handle them very carefully. Well, Dorothy and I, I think we understand each other, Mr. Parker. Yes, I know. But when little things crop up, as they will in the best of families, well... You give in a bit, and a woman will give in a whole lot. <laughs> I see. Uh, just uh, some spending money for your honeymoon. What? Well, haven't you made some mistake? I... That's all right. I want you both to remember your honeymoon as long as you live. Well, but, I, but I can't... Now take... you turn down my check once for saving some lives. I want this one to remind you that I'm entrusting you with the most precious life in the world. Well, thank you, Mr. Parker. Come in. Hello, Dick. Isn't it funny? That door connects both our rooms. Oh, please come in. So I can really believe it. Still seems like a dream. Oh, you're nothing but a kid. And you're nothing but a kitten. It's been a strenuous day, getting married and running off to the yacht. So I think I'll retire. Good night, husband. See you in the morning. Good night. Kitten, you sleep? Madame, you look marvelous in this. Uh, this Madame Bretonna I have shown to no one else, for no one else could wear it as you can. Is that the kind of a woman you think I am? Oh, not that <laughs> you are, but that you should look on occasion. order a coat. But I knew you will after you saw this. Oh, it's magnificent. It was smuggled out of Russia a few skins at a time. Don't tempt me, Prince. We're almost broke. But when your husband sees you in this, ooh, ha, 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 he will not think of the expense. Oh, ha, ha, ha. I'll try it on, but I won't take it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Beautiful. <laughs> it is. It's What's the bad news, Prince? Oh, only 200,000 francs. Good heavens, I can't afford that. Afford? 
$10,000 for a coat like this, madame. Really, you frighten me when you say it in thanks. But put that way, it does seem sort of... Uh... Merci bien, madame. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir, madame. Au revoir. Au revoir, madame. Au revoir. Au revoir, madame. Au revoir, monsieur. <laughs> do you really like it? I think it's perfectly stunning. I do. Oh, Dick, come here. I want to show oh, you something. Dick, where's Llewellyn? Why, why, he's downstairs. I think he'll be up in a moment. Entree. Oh! Oh, my candy is dying! Oh! Oh, my baby! What's happened to my beautiful baby? Oh, my darling baby! Oh! Listen, darling, I can explain oh, everything. Oh! I thought at least you could take care of my dog to earn your I living. Know, but, Pat, oh, don't but... talk to me. You're not fit for anything. You're not a man. You're just what everybody calls you. Oh, now, Pat, You're please, a... let me explain. Get out of my sight, you... you worm. All right, Pat. Oh. Aren't you a little rough on him, Lucille? No. What do you think I give him his allowance for? Look at my darling. Just look at her. Can't the poor sap do anything to earn his money? Just look at my darling. Just look at her. Oh, you don't understand what I've been through. Just wait until I get him alone. I'm awfully sorry this had to happen, Dick. Uh, I'll see you again later. Uh, good night. That mother's little baby girl get hurted by the nasty, mean old man. Just wait until your mother gets home. But, Dick, how'd you like the coat? Oh, don't try and change the subject. Disgusting, wasn't it? I'm through with her. That's all right. You know what I mean. Kept husband there. If you apply that to yourself, it's an insult to me. Well, that's what I am, until we get home. You're making me angry. Oh, please don't be angry with me, Dot. Well, if you promise not to say things like that anymore... Well, I've I... got to get back to work. But look, we haven't been to Deauville, Nice, Monte Carlo, or Biritz. But that's the best part of our honeymoon. Road work can keep. Now, how about keeping my self-respect? Oh, why can't we stay over here longer? Why, a few more months won't do any harm. Well... What are you thinking about? Well, it's cold. 200,000 francs, that's $10,000. Well, it's worth it. Well, where's the money coming from? Oh, don't be so dense. All you have to do is cable father. Well, I've cabled him three times already. And he hasn't turned us down once. Well, I'm not going to keep on hitting him for more. Not if I ask you? Oh, please don't ask me. You know I've got to get back to work. I've got to start earning a living. But there's no rush. Now, your father's been wonderful, but I'm not going to impose on him any longer. But we've got to go back. <gasps> oh, Dot, what's the matter? You know very well your old work can wait. But it isn't right. We've got to go back. First, we're going to Deauville, Nice, Monte Carlo, and Biritz. No, we're not going to Deauville, Nice, Monte Carlo, and Biritz. We're going home.
Well, how do you like it? Well, it's fine, but... But what, sweet? Oh, it's all right for people who like this sort of thing, but we won't stay here long. Oh, what do you mean? Tomorrow, you and I will go looking for a little apartment. Say, that's right. I'd forgotten all about that. We do need a little place in town. Say, what are you driving at? Don't you know where we are? We're home. Home? Our home? Yes. I've been saving it for a surprise. Surprise! <laughs> They're both too happy for words, Huey. Isn't it wonderful to think they've been in every spot in Europe? England, France, Germany, Italy, Switzerland, everywhere. Yeah, well, I don't want to discourage you, but a rolling stone gathers no moss. Dick has a wonderful wife. I'm so glad. Didn't they ask you over to the house? This is their first night in their new home, and they want to be alone and quiet. Well, Mr. Parker, I'm ready to go back on the job. That's great. I'm glad to hear it. We've got a fine office for you, son, and we're going to keep you mighty busy. Oh, that's great. <laughs> well, we've got to be going. I'm going to say good night, Dick. You see, I think you and Dot ought to be alone. <laughs> oh, by the way, where is Dot? I want to say good night. Well, I don't know. Oh, well, never mind. I'll see her again later. <laughs> Come, Llewellyn, we must go. Good night. Good night. Good night, Llewellyn. Well, Dick, we'll have to go, too. Tell me, how did the boyfriend behave? Did he sleep in his overalls? What do you care what he slept in? Can't you do anything besides knock people? Now, listen, Dot, you think you're kidding me, but you're only kidding yourself. About Dick? Oh, you're crazy. Oh, this marriage can't last. I've never seen one that could, and you know it's true. But Dick and I are different. I know. But he just doesn't belong with this crowd. Don't worry about him. He will before I get through with him. Ah, you're going to have a tough time making a tea hound out of that, uh, what do you call him? Uh, oh, yes, steel boss. Well, what's the matter? If you don't stop rising, Dick. Oh, I'm sorry. Won't you forgive me? Yes, but it won't happen again. It won't. I promise. Cross my heart, eh? And listen, just to prove that we're still good friends, how about a little kiss? Just one, Charlie. <laughs> uh oh. Aren't you forgetting your friends? They're all going home. Well, if that's the case, I guess I better go along. Good night, Doc. Good night, Charlie. Good night, Dick. Sorry, Dick. I'll bid them good night. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? Wasn't it a swell party? You know what I mean. No. What? You're necking with Bates. Oh, Dick, don't be silly. I've known Charlie all my life. That doesn't make any difference. You don't mean to tell me you're jealous. <laughs> you just bet I am. I don't care very much for Mr. Bates. Now, look, Charlie's all right. Now, don't go worrying about that. Listen, Doc. Don't ever let it happen again. Well, of course I won't if you feel that way about it. Come on now, let's go and inspect the house, huh? No, wait a minute. We can't stay here. Why not? It isn't right. It's too much. Your father's been too kind to us. 
Besides, I could never support this place on my salary. Is that all that's bothering you? Yes. And that's why we're going into a smaller place. Oh, Dick. Oh, I'll be so disappointed. Why, I planned everything. I know, dear, but... Now, look, Dick. What would everybody say if we left this house? Ah, oh, Dick. You'd do this for your little kittens, won't you? Oh, I'd do anything in the world for you. Oh. Hello, Huey. How's everything at the factory? Sufficient unto the day is the evil they're after. Why, what do you mean? That son of yours is getting pretty high hat. Well, a friend in need is a friend indeed. Why, what has Dick done? It ain't what he's done, it's what he ain't done. He won't even get me that job as boss puddler. Why, I do more work around there now than he does. He don't do nothing. He's the joke of the joint. Oh, now, Huey, I'm sure... Well, he that... won't tie-hat this baby any longer. I'm through with him. We are known by the company we do not keep. Good morning, Miss Bell. Good morning. Any calls? Yes, Mr. Parker's been trying to get you all morning. Said he'd call after lunch. And Mrs. Brenton called. Said she'd call back. Oh, fine. Hello? Oh, yes, just a moment, please. Mrs. Brenton on the wire, Mr. Brenton. Thank you. Hello, kitten. I just wanted to remind you, dear, I'll meet you at the recital at 2.30. And don't forget we'll do it at the Ritz at 5. Oh, yes, and Rose Clayton's giving us that big dinner party at the club tonight. All right. Goodbye, sweetheart. Any orders, Mr. Brenton? Do at the recital at 2.30, the Ritz at 5. And... Oh, never mind about that. Well, Dick, well, I've got big news for you. Well, that's all? <laughs> Looking for you all morning. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't feel very well. Oh, that's all right. You still think uh, Barber's idea about that bridge is practical? I know it is. Uh, you know it's against all the theories of engineering. Yes, but this bridge won't be built on theories. It'll be built on brains and imagination and concrete and steel. Mm. Why, look at this. Now, when Barber planned to put those steel girders... <laughs> that's all right. That's far enough. I just want to know if you are still sold on the idea. More than ever. Fine, that's just the way I feel. Now, what I want to tell you is this. I've made up my mind to take the biggest gamble of my life. I am going to win this contract with that bridge. You'll never make it. You know what you're up against, don't you? A bunch of old fogies who can't see anything new or original. Yeah, the thing I need most is a man who knows this idea from every angle. A man who will set them afire with his own enthusiasm. A man who gets whatever he goes after, no matter how tough the opposition. You mean Barber? No, he's an inventor. I want a salesman. The man I've picked out to put this thing over is you. 
Me? Yes, if you can sell a hard-boiled egg like me, you can certainly sell those St. Louis boys. You bet I can. <laughs> of course you can. All you need to do is put that old fighting football spirit into it and you can't fail. Don't you worry, I won't fail you. Why, son, it's the chance of a lifetime. I know it is. Now catch the next train. Oh, now take it easy. Time enough for that tonight. What we'll do, we'll spend this afternoon going over this thing from A to Z so there won't be any chance of a slip-up. Oh, boy. Just wait till I tell Dot. Won't she be proud to know that you gave me this big job? How long will I be away? About two weeks. Great, I'll take her with me. Fine. Now, come on. We'll go over to the office and go through this thing thoroughly. All right. That's fine, Mary. By the way, did Mr. Brunton call and say be detained? No. No, madam. Doc. Dot! Oh, Dot, I've got the grandest news! Good heavens, where have you been? Oh my gosh, I forgot to call you. Yes, you didn't come to the recital. You didn't show up at the Ritz. And here it is nearly 8 o'clock and you know very well with you at that party. Oh, but wait. Gee, your father's a grand old scout. He's given me the biggest job in the history of the company. You can tell me all about it later. No, I can't. We're leaving for St. Louis tonight. What? Sure, you and I. Have you gone out of your head? Of course I have. Now come on and get your things packed. Have you forgotten the Claytons are giving a dinner in our honor at the club tonight? Oh, Dickens with a dinner. We're shoving off for St. Louis. What's the matter? Matter? Well, of all the crazy stunts going to St. Louis, I'll give Father a piece of my mind. Oh, but kidding, it's the chance of a lifetime. It'll be a great trip for you and a nice change for two weeks. Two weeks? At the top of the season? What a chance. Oh, it'll be like a second honeymoon. Well, I've decided you not to go. That's all there is to it. Hey, what are you doing? I'll tell Dad a thing or two. Riverside 6826. Oh, give me that. Oh, no. I'm going to St. Louis, and you're going with me. With a book full of engagements? I guess not. Well, then it looks as if I'll have to go alone. Oh. And you'd leave me all alone for two weeks? I can't help it. Business is business. And you think more of business than you do about me? Now, you know, it isn't that at all. Oh, don't let's quarrel about it. I don't want to quarrel either, dear. You do love your little kittens, don't you? And you won't go away and leave your little kittens all alone for two weeks, will you? Oh, I do love you, Dot. <laughs> but I've got to go. Well, go if you want to. Oh, now be reasonable. Be reasonable, huh? Go to St. Louis. Don't let me keep you. I'll find someone who'll be glad to take me out. Oh, now listen. No. Aren't you going to say goodbye, Dot? Goodbye.
dick. You don't mean to tell me you left her crying. Dick, I'm ashamed of you. But can't you see it wasn't my fault? Oh, wasn't it? She made her plans and you rushed in without warning and upset them. But mine were more important. Oh, yes, to you. But her plans might have been just as important to her. Oh, I, I never thought of that. Now you go on right home and smooth it over. But I can't. I haven't time. You've got to find time. You can't leave her like this. Why, there's no telling what might happen. A high-spirited girl like her. What could I do? Take her in your arms and ask her to forgive you. And give up the trip? You won't have to give up anything. But be fair to her. Don't ask her to give up anything either. But what if she insists? Just take her in your arms the right way, and she won't insist. I'll bet you'll find her all packed up and waiting for you to ask her. Oh, you look lovely in that gown, madam. I've been saving it for a special occasion. Hello? It's Mr. Bates, madam. Oh, let me talk to him. Hello, Charlie. I'll phone Dorothy right away, Mother. Carlton, 8831. Now, you be nice to her. Well, when am I going to see you? I'll see you over at the party tonight. What's the matter? Wine's busy. I know what I'll do. I'll run home and catch her before she leaves. Now, don't you worry. Is Mrs. Brunton upstairs? No, sir. She just left. Hello? Give me Lakewood 6522. Please. Hello. Hello? Is this the Lakeview Country Club? Well, Mrs. Brunton will be there shortly with the Clayton party. I wonder if you'd have her call her home. Yes, Mr. Brunton, as soon as she comes in. Thank you. Say when. All right. When? Thank you. You're welcome. Give us a little toast, Dot. Know any new ones? No, I don't. Pardon me a moment. I didn't want any intruders coming in. Well, well, the old 10, 20, 30 stuff, eh? Surely, why not? Well, here's to you. Here's to both of us. Let her go. Mm. How about some more? Fine. Now give me Lakewood, 6522. Yes. Hello? Is this the Lakeview Country Club? Well, this is Mr. Brunton speaking. Mrs. Brunton is there with the Clayton party. I wonder if you'd call her to the phone. I'm sorry, sir. The Clayton party has been called off. Called off? Well, is Mrs. Brunton there? No, sir. Uh, she just left with Mr. Bates.
The sound of the gong denoted exactly 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and marks the conclusion of our program. Good night, pleasant dreams. Is that right, two o'clock? Oh, the evening is still early. Really, Charlie, I'd better be trotting along. You know, I'm terribly disappointed in you. Yes? Mm -hmm. Well, we'll certainly have to fix that. I thought you had lots more finesse. I suppose your big he-man taught you all the fine points of the game. Oh, never mind about him. Get my things. I'm bored stiff. I thought, sure, you'd give me a thrill. Don't worry, darling. You're going to get your thrill. Don't play so rough, Charlie. You're a cute little kitten. Kitten? Kitten? Why, you're a little hellcat. Ah, the perils of the big city. Isn't any working girl safe? Not with this fiend in human form. Unhand me, Jack Dalton. Think of my reputation, please. <laughs> Just think of mine. Why, if I let you go to be fatal to my reputation? <gasps> wait, wait. If you come one step nearer, I'll plunge this dagger in my heart. All right, clown if you want to, but don't forget. The villain still pursues her. <gasps> ha ha. No, honestly, Charlie, you slay me. Your technique is rotten. Yes? Well, you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh. Wait, what am I supposed to do now? Scream, I know. How loud can you scream? <laughs> Not loud enough. Oh. Will the Marines never come? Oh. 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 What's that? It's the United States Cavalry, boys. We are shamed. <laughs> 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 there you are, Doc. You win. Well, stay a while. Don't rush off. I'd love to, Charlie, but I've got to be up first thing in the morning. Yes? What's the big idea? I'm going to grab the first train for St. Louis. I'll get your wraps for you. Where have you been? You know, Rose and Bob Clayton. Yeah? At the party, remember? Must have been some party. Oh, it was. Oh, it was an awful brawl. Lots to drink? Barrels. Why? Because those parties usually don't break up until they've cleaned out the last bottle of booze. And it's pretty late. Yes, I know. But you see, um, oh, Rose passed out. Uh, and Bob asked me to take care of her. Anything serious? Oh, no. Just a bad head, but, oh, she's all right now. Mm, that's good. Oh, Dick. Dick. Let me explain. You don't have to. You're with Bates, and I can guess the rest. But, Dick, I want to tell you the truth. Don't bother. Don't you love me anymore? 
Why don't you ask yourself the same question? But you know I do. I don't know anything of the kind. Why, I just told you. Yes, you've told me a lot of things, but I don't believe you. Oh, Dick. Uh, expect me to believe a liar and a cheat? You dare say that to me? Well, that's what you are. You didn't give me a chance to tell you. You've had your chance. You've told me enough. I can account for everything. Oh, I don't doubt that. All your friends weren't drunk and put in jail. Oh, I know all about you and Charlie Bates. That's just it. You don't know a thing about it. Well, I can guess. I'm well acquainted with the rotten habits of that crowd you trot around with. The rotten crowd, eh? Well, I notice you don't mind trotting around with them. Oh, don't I? Well, I only did it to please you. <laughs> you accept their friendship and hospitality, then you turn around and call them... A rotten bunch of pasty-faced, loose-lipped wasters. Parasites! Parasites? Well, that's good. That sounds fine coming from you. Why, you're in the same class as Llewellyn Post, only you won't admit it. Oh, I'll admit it. I'm nothing but a kept husband. Since you put it that way, that's just what you are. That's just what I was. Was? What are you going to do? Quit. I'm through with you and I'm through with all this. Through chiseling your father out of all that money I don't earn just to be your lapdog. Oh, is that so? Well, you can keep all that stuff. There's only one thing I'll keep. That's my self-respect. All right. I won't give you back this engagement ring because I paid for it myself. But you can give this back to your mother. Here. Goodbye, Mr. Brunton. My lawyers will call you up in a few days. Don't hold me up for too much alimony. You don't look so snappy this morning, Mrs. Brunton. I didn't sleep a wink all night. Worried about Dick. Ah, he's all right. He takes after you. Great oaks from little acorns grow. I know everything's all right, but still I... Uh... Say, you ain't gonna raise my room rent just because I'm a boss puddler, are you? No, you ain't. You better hurry. I never hurry. I claim haste makes waste. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Parker. Good morning. Mrs. Brunton downstairs? No, sir. She hasn't come down yet today. <laughs> My daughter in? Yes, sir, but you can't see her. Why can't I? She's been ill. She hasn't slept. Well, that's just too bad. Oh, Dad, I'm terribly sorry. You ought to be. Though little good it'll do you. Well, what do you mean? You almost ruined the biggest deal the Parker Steel Corporation ever had. Yes, and you ruined one of the finest boys I ever saw. I did not. I tell you, you did. You rotted his soul. You killed his manhood and ambition. Why, when he walked into the office with this, I thought I was looking at a ghost. Why, what is he? I don't know what he's done, and I hate to think what he might do. I tried to pep him up and make him take that St. Louis job, but I'm afraid. Oh, I'm afraid, too. You had an infernal nerve letting your pink tees interfere with that boy's career? What right of you to say that to me when it's all your fault? My fault? Yes. Oh, it's no good arguing with you. You men always stick together. Well, you can get rid of this house. I never want to live in it again. You'd better get rid of some of your foolishness. And you've got to find that boy and find him quick. And what's more, you're going back to him. I won't go back. I won't go back. I won't, 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 I won't go back. Well... He said goodbye. But he said he couldn't go to St. Louis and put that deal over the way he was feeling. Mother, I'd give anything to see him just for a minute. I'm afraid, dear, from what you've told me, it's too late. Oh. There. 
there, 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 now, dear. I didn't mean that. No, it's just as you said. It's too late. Oh, Mother, I've been just rotten. No, you haven't, dear. You've just been human. But why did I say... Oh, why didn't I cut my tongue off? Oh, well, you didn't mean it. Dick should have known you didn't mean it. Oh, can you blame him? Who'd stand for being called up? Listen, Dorothy. All husbands are kept. Some of them are kept with money. But most of them with love and devotion and sacrifice. Why, it's every woman's mission in life, keeping her husband. Mother. Oh. Couldn't you find him, Mr. Hanbury? No, didn't he phone in? No. What can't be cured must be endured. Any luck, Hanbury? No, couldn't find him anywhere. Been in every speakeasy in town. By George. I wonder... Say, I think I know where I can find him. Call my chauffeur and tell him to bring my car at once. Yes, sir. Connecticut wrapper with asafetity filler. Beggars can't be choosers. Oh, boy, I'm glad you didn't change your mind. Mr. Parker. I knew you wouldn't fail me, son. All aboard! Don't you worry a minute. I'll put this deal over. But that resignation goes the minute I get it over. We'll talk about that when you get back. Goodbye. Good luck. And boy, bring in a table. Yes, sir. Come right up, boss. What are you doing here? Aren't you glad to see me? I can't say that. I'm no liar. Oh, I don't blame you. I did lie to you, but I'm no cheat. I couldn't let you go away without explaining it to you. Oh, Dick, you must believe me. Oh, I do believe you. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh, listen, Dick, I'm going to get rid of the house. Oh, that's not enough. We're not going to be kept by your father's money any longer. Oh, no, never. Dick, we're going to live on your salary. But wait a minute. Will you do me a favor? What is it? Let's start all over again. You propose to me. Will you be my wife, Doc? Yes. But this time, I'm going to keep you in a different way. Oh! 